In this lesson, we are going to discuss the central nervous system. At the end of this video lesson, you should be able to explain the role of the central nervous system, identify the functions of the different regions of the brain, and lastly, describe the function of the spinal cord. The central nervous system is the body's centralized command center which processes input perceived by the sensory organs and delivers necessary responses. The CNS consists of the brain and the spinal cord. The estimated 100 billion neurons in your brain are assembled into complex networks that enable you to subconsciously regulate your internal environment by neural means, experience emotions, voluntarily control your movements, perceive your own body and your surroundings, and lastly, engage in other higher cognitive processes such as thought and memory. Aside from the brain and the spinal cord, there are also four important cells which support the central nervous system. Astrocytes or the star-shaped insulators, microglia or the spider-like phagocytes, ependymal cells that line the cavities of the brain and the spinal cord, and oligodendrocytes that produce the insulating myelin sheets. Let us now discuss the two major parts of the CNS, starting with the brain. The brain is the major control center of the nervous system. Being delicate and having irreplaceable cells, it is enclosed by the cranium or skull. Three protective and nourishing membranes, the meninges, lie between the bony covering and the nervous tissue. The brain also floats in a special cushioning fluid, the cerebrospinal fluid. Also, a highly selective blood-brain barrier limits access of blood-borne materials into the vulnerable brain tissue. The brain, being the major control center of the nervous system, has four very complex parts. The cerebrum, the diencephalon, the cerebellum, and lastly, the brainstem. Let us first discuss the cerebrum. The cerebrum is the largest region of the brain which is divided into two hemispheres that control the opposite sides of the body. The two hemispheres are connected to each other by the corpus callosum, which is a thick band consisting of an estimated 300 million neuronal axons that connect these two. The corpus callosum is the body's information superhighway. The two hemispheres communicate and cooperate with each other by means of constant information exchange through this neural connection. Thinking takes place in the cerebrum, which is the largest part of the brain. This also is where impulses from the senses are interpreted, memory is stored, and movements are controlled. The outer layer of the cerebrum, called the cortex, is made by many regions and grooves. These structures increase the surface area of the cortex, allowing more complex thoughts to be processed. Aside from being divided into two hemispheres, the cerebrum is also divided into four lobes. These lobes specialize in different complex processes. The occipital lobes, located posteriorly or at the back of the head, carry out the initial processing of visual input. Auditory or sound sensation is initially received by the temporal lobes, located laterally or on the sides of the head. The parietal lobe lies at the back of the central deep enfolding. This is primarily responsible for receiving and processing sensory input. And lastly, the frontal lobe lies in front of the parietal lobe. The frontal lobe is responsible for three major functions. Voluntary motor activity, speaking ability, and elaboration of thought. After the cerebrum, let us now discuss the cerebellum. The cerebellum is a highly folded baseball-sized part of the brain that lies underneath the occipital lobe of the cortex and is attached to the backside of the upper portion of the brainstem. Stimuli from the eyes and ears and from muscles and tendons, which are the tissues that connect muscles to bones, are interpreted in the cerebellum. With this information, the cerebellum is able to coordinate voluntary muscle movements, maintain muscle tone, and help maintain balance. A complex activity, such as riding a bike, requires a lot of coordination and control of your muscles. The cerebellum coordinates your muscle movements so that you can maintain your balance. Now, let us discuss the diencephalon. The diencephalon is nearly totally enclosed by cerebral hemispheres. It has two major parts. First is the thalamus. The thalamus is the main input center for sensor information going to the cerebrum. 
incoming information from all the senses is sorted in the thalamus and sent to the appropriate cerebral centers for further processing. The thalamus is formed by two masses, each roughly the size and shape of a walnut. The second part of the diencephalon is the hypothalamus. The prefix hypo anatomically means under. This means that the hypothalamus is situated below the thalamus. It is a much smaller structure that contains the body thermostat as well as the central biological clock. Through its control of the pituitary gland, the hypothalamus regulates hunger and thirst, plays a role in sexual and mating behaviors, and controls the fight or flight response. The hypothalamus is also the source of posterior pituitary hormones and of releasing hormones that act on the anterior pituitary. For the last major part of the central nervous system, we have the brainstem. The brainstem is the stalk-like lower portion of the brain. The brainstem is a vital link between the spinal cord and higher brain regions. It has three major parts. The midbrain receives and integrates several types of sensory information and sends it to specific regions of the forebrain. All sensory axons involved in hearing either terminate in the midbrain or pass through it on their way to the cerebrum. In addition, the midbrain coordinates visual reflexes, such as the peripheral vision reflex. The head turns toward an object approaching from the side without the brain having formed an image of the object. The second part of the brainstem is the pons. The pons is responsible for breathing and eye movement. The pons also participates in some of these activities. For example, it regulates the breathing centers in the medulla, the last part of the brainstem. The medulla oblongata is a stalk-like lower portion of the brain that controls several automatic and homeostatic functions. An additional function of the medulla is the control of several automatic, homeostatic functions including breathing, heart and blood vessel activity, swallowing, vomiting, and digestion. There we have the four major parts of the brain. However, there is one system in the brain that specializes in emotions and learning. This is the limbic system. The limbic system is not a separate structure, but a ring of four brain structures that surround the brainstem and are interconnected by intricate neuron pathways. This complex interacting network is associated with emotions, basic survival and sociosexual behavior patterns, motivation, and learning. The generation and experience of emotions involve many regions of the brain. However, the amygdala plays a key role in recognizing and recalling a number of emotions. Depression is among the psychiatric disorders associated with defects in limbic system neurotransmitters. A functional deficiency of serotonin or norepinephrine or both is implicated in depression. A disorder characterized by a pervasive negative mood accompanied by a generalized loss of interests, an inability to experience pleasure, and suicidal tendencies. All effective antidepressant drugs increase the available concentration of these neurotransmitters in the CNS. After discussing the complicated structures of the brain, let us now discuss the spinal cord. The spinal cord is made up of bundles of neurons that carry impulses from all parts of the body to the brain and from the brain to all parts of your body. The spinal cord is a long, slender cylinder of nerve tissue that extends from the brainstem. It is about 45 cm long or 18 inches long and 2 cm in diameter about the size of your thumb. Paired spinal nerves emerge from the spinal cord through spaces formed between the bony, wing-like arcs of adjacent vertebrae. The spinal nerves are named according to the region of the vertebral column from which they emerge. There are 8 pairs of cervical or neck nerves, namely C1 to C8. 12 thoracic or chest nerves, 5 lumbar or abdominal nerves, 5 sacral or pelvic nerves, and 1 coccygeal or tailbone nerve. To conclude this lesson, let us now review the following key points. The CNS is responsible for the control and integration of all our body processes. The brain controls a range of body functions. It is divided into four major regions namely the cerebrum, diencephalon, brainstem, and the cerebellum. And lastly, the spinal cord transmits information between the body and the brain. 
and that ends our discussion on the central nervous system.